So I was initially going to hold this bit of news until tomorrow's news radar, but as they say, the hits keep coming and they won't stop coming, and it would have ended up being like most of the news radar video. So we're just going to do it here today. We have a whole bunch of information to share about the Nothing Phone one, and the first bit of information is something that I am quite pleased to see. It is the existence of a matte black version of the Nothing Phone One. If you haven't seen the prior versions before, well, there you go. That's what the Nothing Phone One looks like. LEDs all over the place. I think that it looks quite interesting. I know a lot of you think it looks like an iPhone that is kind of clear with lights on it. That's fine, you're allowed to think that. But I do think that this black variant looks very, very clean. Matte black everything. I'm with MKBHD on that. As you know, my, my Surface Duo 2 has the, the uh, leather skin. I just like the look of a nice clean black device. Of course, it's got these interesting LEDs. If you missed the earlier story, this LED down here is going to actually show you your battery charge level. It can flash to a ringtone should you be one of these uh, very few people, I imagine, in 2022 still using uh, ringtones on their phones, still taking phone calls. And then, of course, you can use the LEDs as a fill light if you're taking a photo of something up very close. Is it a gimmick? Is it a feature? Who knows? Beyond the existence of, again, what I think is a rather nice-looking black model of the Nothing Phone, when we got a tweet from Carl Pay, the guy who's, you know, making this thing, one of the founders of Nothing, and he tweeted out this image. 778G Plus is the most balanced choice. Change my mind. And basically what we're getting at here is that the Nothing Phone 1 is going to be running the Snapdragon 778G Plus. Now, there was some talk in the beginning that perhaps it will be running Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, which of course is the current generation of Snapdragon's mid-range processor. The 8 Gen 1 is the top of the line. But that apparently is not happening. They're going to be going to 778G+, and their reasoning for this is balance. So they're really hoping to stretch this thing's battery life for a really, really long time. And by using this older processor, the price is going to stay down quite a bit as well. And these are both aspects that I think we're going to touch on here in this video because there's a ton more information to cover about the Nothing Phone one here. Personally, I'm not super upset by this. I'm not like a big spec person, right? Like phones are fast enough, okay? Last year's mid-range chip is fine. It's totally fast enough. Unless you're like one of these people that's like, I need to get all the frames on the highest graphic settings on Genshin Impact and nothing less will do. This is going to be absolutely fine. You're going on Twitter, you're on Reddit, you're on Instagram, you're taking photos, you're Snapchatting, you're your BFF, whatever it is the kids are doing these days. It's going to be totally fine for all of that. And again, price, battery to be considered. But let's talk more about some specifications, some information that has come out. Because via Amazon leaks, we now do seem to have the price of the Nothing Phone 1. And it's kind of where you would hope that it would be. This is a listing on a European version of uh, Amazon. And it shows it to be 469 euros. Now, this variant has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 storage. If you jump up to 12 gigs of RAM, which is pretty good, 256 storage, you're looking at 549 euros. Again, not bad at all. Another interesting tidbit here, you can actually bundle in the Nothing Ear ones, their earbuds, for 567. So you get the phone and the earbuds for 567. It's important to also note that the Pixel 6a will be about 10 euros cheaper than this when it launches here very shortly. So these two are going to be really going head to head. But obviously the Pixel 6a, we pretty much know all the specs on this thing, but we don't have quite everything yet on the Nothing Phone 1, but we do have an Amazon listing. And guess what Amazon listings have? They have specs. So if we jump over here to this tweet from this verified user, I'm not going to try to butcher their name there out of uh, respect for their culture. We have a screenshot from the Amazon listing. So let's go through this and see what kind of information we can actually glean. So we have the Glyph interface. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the Glyph interface. It's the LEDs on the back. It's a big selling feature of the device. And it is, of course, mentioned in the Amazon listing. We do have Gorilla Glass on both sides. So the screen and the back 
covered in Gorilla Glass. I wish I knew exactly what kind of Gorilla Glass it was, what level we're talking. For the price this thing is rumored at, I don't know that we're going to be getting Victus, but who knows? Anything is possible. Advanced vibration motors, symmetrical bezels, which we have in fact seen. They talked about this early on that it would not have a uh, big chin at the bottom. It would have symmetrical bezels, and it looks as though they are in fact pulling that off. 50 megapixel dual camera. Now, this is a little bit confusing to me. Do they actually mean both sensors are 50 megapixels? Because I've also seen rumors of one 50 megapixel and then a 16 megapixel for the ultra wide. We're not really sure which way this is going. I can't tell from how this is worded what they mean. It's kind of cut off on the side. It's a little bit unclear but they do talk about a 1.8 aperture which is pretty good that should give you a decent amount of bokeh depth of field it's not quite like a portrait lens or anything like that but it should give you a decent amount of bokeh and then an ultra wide with a 114 degree field of view which actually matches the pixel 6s 4k 60 video live hdr Nothing OS with no bloatware. That's an important thing to have. A 120 hertz display, 6.55 inch OLED as well. It's a rather large screen. And then you have the specs. He did kind of reiterate some things down here as well. Uh, widgets, no bloatware, glyph interface, symmetrical bezel, bezels, aluminum frame. So from there, I guess the big question is how does this stack up against the Pixel 6? Because we're looking at a really, really close match in terms of prices. I think it's like 10 or 20 euros difference between the two of these devices. Well, I went on to my OneNote and I put together a quick, uh, what would you call this, a table to kind of compare the specifications. You can see them here. I've put 50 megapixel for the ultra wide, but it may be a 16 megapixel ultra wide. We don't know conflicting reports. We don't have a good answer on that one just yet. But as it stands, the camera, you know, the raw specs, even if it is, it is a 16 megapixel, you would have to give the raw specs to the nothing phone. But you almost certainly have to give the processing on the camera front to the Pixel 6a. So you'd probably assume the Pixel probably going to take better photos, even though the specs on the Nothing Phone are a bit better. On the display front, this is an absolute win for the Nothing Phone 1. It is a bigger display and it runs at 120 Hz instead of, I believe, 60 Hz for the Pixel 6a. That is a win. In terms of the system on a chip, the Snapdragon 770G Plus versus the first gen Google Tensor. I think it's actually going to be closer than you may be thinking. Now, of course, the Google Tensor, the stuff, the software that comes along with that, which Google lies and tells us you have to have a Tensor to have. You don't. But anyways, Magic Eraser, all those software things that they're going to tie to the Tensor, that's definitely very, very important. But in terms of raw performance, probably not going to be a big difference. But you got to give the edge to Google on the extra sauce that they're going to have there. RAM, that's a win for the Nothing Phone. Storage is going to be really similar. Both UFS 3.1, as far as we know, should be really, really similar. Battery, pretty much a draw as well. But which one's going to be more battery efficient? You got to think the Nothing Phone's processor is probably more efficient, but the display is bigger with a higher refresh rate, so that might even things up again. Although the Nothing Phone one likely to charge faster than I believe 18 watts is what the Pixel 6a is capped at. Probably going to get much faster charging on the Nothing Phone, and then of course about a 20 euro difference between the two. So. It's a pretty close battle as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you're in that region where, the many regions, where both of these phones will be launching, and you're looking for a budget phone that's going to be really solid, it's going to be really fun to watch these two phones as they develop, as we get more information and reviews do come out about them to see which one is actually going to be the better phone. I love having interesting, slightly different, slightly oddball devices in this price bracket. This is the place to experiment, right? You don't want to experiment with $1,000 phones, but for four or $500 phones, you can have a little bit of fun and not necessarily totally destroy yourself by doing so. What do you think about this though? Which phone to you, if you're looking at one or the other, the Nothing Phone or the Pixel 6a, which one would you be leaning towards? You would normally say the Pixel is more reliable. You don't really know much about the Nothing Phone, right? It's kind of an unknown commodity, but the Pixel 6 had a lot of issues. Maybe you're looking to do something different and experiment. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.